Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Code with Sunny and in this video I will be talking about the question the sum of load pairs index number is 1862 and the problem is one of the hard problems of the lead code. Okay, so this problem is actually the interesting one. It requires the basically mathematical approach and logical thinking to solve this problem. You can solve this problem like uh, you can have the idea and but you try to implement that you will get a TLA because uh, you need to take care of the bounds of this array and the constraints and all over that okay so let us first try to understand this problem and then we will together find it out the best solution of this problem given an integer array nums return the sum of the fluid uh, that is sum of fluid value of this one nums of i divided by nums of j and what are this i and j that is the indices in this range note that i and j can be the same value that is pointing to the same index and since the answer can be very large, we need to take care for this modulo. That is, uh, take the answer with this prime number, modulo this prime number. And float is basically the integer part of this division. Many people have suggested uh, in, the discuss, uh, in the discussion forum, like of uh, this lead code, as seen about the like pen victory approach and many other approaches. But I, what I consider is like uh, you can solve this problem by the simple basic maths of. Uh, prefix some logic of basics of dynamic programming and all of that. Okay, so let us try to understand the first constraints and uh, this stuff. Okay, because this is going to play a very important role in solving this problem. And uh, one of the good thing is like every number of this array is going to lie in this range 10 power 5. And nums length is also 10 power 5. So we can solve this problem efficiently because this is going to help us. And how it is going to help us? Let us try to understand this one with the help of example. So let's move further. Okay, so consider this array being given to us and note that i and g can be same index uh, that is pointing to the same index. Okay, so one of the approach that you may think like a brute force approach consider for every i in this array and consider g for lying in this every array and find the flow division it to take off o of n square time which is obviously not going to pass under the given time constraints because n is going to be like 10 power 5 so number of iterations can go up to 10 power 10 okay so we should think for an efficient solution okay so one thing that should be thinked upon would be like uh, why not to fix this numerator i think this is denominator nums of j so i'm just fixing this denominator and if i if i'm able to fix this denominator what are the number of nums of i uh, I can have to have the answer a particular fixed number. Okay, if you're not going to understand this, no need to worry about. Let us take an example. Like, let's say I am taking this 5. Okay, so if 5 is the denominator, what are the interval where I can have the fixed answer? Let's say I want the answer as 0. So if my nums of this range, like uh, if my nums of 5 will lie in this range 0 to 4, so it means any value in this range 0 to 4 divided by this 5, my answer would always be 1. That is, I am considering the integer division. So if my a, nums of 5 will vary up to 5 to 9, my answer will come out to be uh, this here, it comes out to be 0 and here it comes out to be 1. Because if you take 6 by 5 or 8 by 5 or 9 by 5, my answer will be 1. And similarly, it's around 10 to 15 or 14, it is 14 actually my answer will come out to be 2. So this is this gives me the idea that if we know the number of numbers lying in this range 0 to 4 or 5 to 9 and 10 to 40 I can easily answer. Okay how I can easily answer let's say I am just fixed my g that is nums of j is 5. Okay so let's say I have x num x1 number of elements in 0 to 4 x2 number of elements in 5 to 9 and x3 number of elements in 10 to 40 and so on. Okay so I can answer easily as uh, my answer is uh, 0 for this interval. It means my answer would be 0 for x1 number of elements. So 0 into x1 plus uh, I, I have my answer as 1 for x2 number of elements. So x2 into 1 plus I have the answer as 2 for x3 number of elements lying in this range 10 to 14. I can increment my x3 into 2 and so on for every element. So this gives me the idea that if I can know the number of elements lying in this particular ranges, I can easily answer that. So one more thing that I can optimize is that is that is going to benefit us is nums of i is going to lie on 10 power 5. 
so i i'm just actually pre calculating the num frequency of every element that is 2's frequency would be 1 5 frequency would be 1 9's frequency would be also 1 so if i am able to calculate this number 0 into x1 x2 into 1 x3 into 2 and so on and uh, let's say i have the 5 frequency as y so my answer would be like some let's call it as some this is going to be like sum of 0 into x1 and so on so my answer would be like y into sum for this uh, for this number 5 and similarly i am going to do this for every number lying in the range 1 to 10 power 5 both inclusive and this is going to give us the correct answer. Note that I need to take care that my answer should be taken with the modulo of this prime number 10 power 9 plus 7. And why this is going to be like optimal and this is going to be like giving the correct answer under the given constraint. Let us try to understand that first. Okay. So let me first erase this whole stuff. Note that I need to do some pre-calculations like uh, I have talked about the frequencies. So I just maintain a frequency table also and it's it has to be size of 10 power 5 because i need to take care for the frequency of 2 should be 1 5 should be 1 and 9 should be 1 and if i if i'm considering the interval let's say i into g that is for a uh, particular g let's say i have uh, uh, okay so why not uh, i should take this at some other number or take uh, a particular example let's say free in the previous one i have taken this 5 i have to take like uh, let's say 5 to 9 or or some other interval like 25 to uh, 25 to 29 I think yes in this case my answer would be like coming out to 50 so if I need to find out the number of elements in this range I must uh, need to maintain a prefix sum of the frequencies for every element of this array so that I can easily answer my number of elements lying in this range will be like count of this index 29 minus count of index 24 so it will give us the number of elements lying in this range okay I'm not talking about this one. I'm talking about the validity of the solution that I've mentioned. And what is that? That is for every i, I will start iterating from 1 to 10 power 5. And this is, I'm just fixing this denominator. Okay. So note that I have taken this i now for this denominator. Don't get confused with this one. So I'm taking this i for this denominator now. And for every this one, I'm just fixing this value. That is my, I have uh, nums of i. That is, uh, that is my denominator is now i. That's, uh, you should consider that only. That is, let's say my i would come out to be 5. It means that my denominator is 5 now. Now, for every i lying in this range, I will just iterate my g from what? I will iterate my g to 1. And it goes up to i into g up to this capital N. And this capital N is going to denote the maximum value that it, could, it can hold like 10 power 5. So I will iterate up to this and how I'm going to fetch the answer like for this i that is I'm talking about let's say I have i equal to 5. So I'm just fixing this denominator for this i what is the number of elements lying in this range i into g. Note that I'm using this inclusive one inclusive bracket i into j into i into j plus 1 minus 1. Okay, so if I am going to do that, it means if I have denominator as 5 and I am just fixing this interval, that is i into j, it is, it is going to vary up to i into j plus 1 minus 1. Let's say j is going to be 2. So my answer, my interval would be like 5 into 2 would be like 10 to 15 minus 1, 14. It means that my answer would be 2, that is, uh, I am talking about j equal to 2. My answer would come out to be 2 for this interval. And I need to count the frequency of elements lying in this interval. How I can count that? By maintaining or pre-calculating the frequency, prefix sum of frequencies of the array. So if let's say I have this uh, count amount of elements lying in this range, my answer would be incremented by count into j. Okay. So this my answer would be incremented by this one. I will do this for every j. And after doing this, uh, let's say I have this sum which is going to denote that particular sum that is uh, this count into j plus uh, that is count 1 into j1 into plus count 2 into j2 and j1 j2 are 1 2 3 and so on that is my answer would be like particular this one for a particular interval and i have this sum and let's say i have y amount of this 5 in this array so my answer would also incremented by that is finally i am going to increment my answer with y into sum 
and this is going to be like a valid one okay and talking about the validity of this uh, approach uh, my time complexity would be like total number of iterations would be like n for i equal to 1 i will uh, iterate for j equal to 1 up to j i into j less than equal to n i will have n number of iterations then if my i is 2 i will have n by 2 number of iterations and then if i is 3 i will have n by 3 and so on so you can easily see this is actually a series whose uh, general time complexity will come out to be n plus 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 and so on it will come out to be log of n okay so my time complexity will be n log n and this is going to be valid okay so let's move further to understand this problem in detail in the coding part okay so you can easily see I have some accepted accepted runtime error access because I have just modifying my code to a greater extent to have a good runtime 292 ms for finally and let's talk about this code okay so uh, what I have done I have taken LL as long long because uh, there might be some overflows I will finally eradicate that with the by typecasting into INT so I have taken capital N as 1e power 5 and uh, there is a frequency uh, vector which is going to count the frequency then take the prefix sum okay and uh, I have taken my answer as 0 and I have iterated for 1 to up to capital N and check if this count of i minus count of i minus 1 is positive or not that is a the frequency of a particular element i is uh, greater than 0 or not if it is greater than 0 then only I can deal with that otherwise no need to do that and find the sum as 0 and I trade g for i into j less than equal to n capital N and uh, it means that for every interval that I am finding it out that is the interval in the range i into j up to i into j plus 1 minus 1 note that I need to take high as minimum of high comma capital N because it may exceed this uh, 10 power 5 value okay so for this range I have my answer as j so I will first find it out the count of this number of elements lying in this range then I will increment my sum by this value that is my answer would be incremented by this that is count number of elements have the answer g and my answer should be incremented with that that is the sum would be incremented with this value what is my answer finally should be incremented that is first I will find it out what is the count of this particular element i so how can I fetch that I have I can easily fetch with count of i minus count of i minus 1 so this is uh, means that current amount of element C U R R has the frequency uh, that is i amount that is the number is i and it has C U R R amount of frequencies in the array. So for every that element for every frequency of that element my answer would be sum. So finally I will increment my answer with current into sum. Note that I need to take care for this modulus every time because it may exceed the 10 power 9 plus 7 value. So I need to take modulus with that prime number. Finally return the integer value of this answer. So this will give us the all test cases pass TLE. Not TLE I think this will give us an AC verdict okay. <laughs> so if you have any doubts do let me know in the comment section of the video. And I will ask the viewers to like this video, share this video and to subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you for watching this video.